Live and in living color. It looks like currently we don't have anybody, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is my wonderful friend uh, in the beard community, Rossio. I have been talking to her for, I think, two to three months. Yeah. Um, and it is one of my most favorite companies as well because they have some well they have my favorite scent of all times and i've been, i look everywhere for this and it's something that if you live in the desert um which is where we both live which is even cooler um it is the smell that everybody recognizes immediately so and they and we love it because it means there's rain involved yep. <laughs> Which is the best part, right? Um, that's so funny exactly. because that's what I never thought. I know people that are always like, hey, um, what is the, you know, why are you guys always so obsessed with rain? It's because there is no <laughs> rain. <laughs> we're obsessed with rain when there is no rain. So exactly. we're, ex yeah, so very exciting. So you live in the west side of Phoenix. Yeah, currently but, I am in the west side of Phoenix. But didn't you, you grew up in Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit, most of most of your life, right? Or all yeah, of your life? All of my entire life, I've never been outside of um, either the Glendale or Phoenix area. So, so you're native. That's cool. Yep. And what is your um, so when you think of living anywhere else? Has have have you ever had an opportunity to like just uh, travel? And is there any other place that you'd want to? check out or is this just been like most people I know they're they my aunt used to call herself a desert rat yeah and... um, I don't know I would honestly have to say I have in-laws in Portland hmm. and my sister-in-law well I actually have in-laws in Portland and New York and I believe in North Carolina so I would want to visit those places no, oh, that's awesome. Mainly because of the food. <laughs> Mainly because yeah. of the food. Uh, you know what? I'm a foodie too. So yeah, food is like, it, food is love, right? Food is life. Yeah. yeah. Is. I like, uh, I really am into food and um, I love different types of food. I like seafood a lot now. Yes, and see, that's another reason why I need to go to Portland for mainly the seafood I heard is extremely delicious. So yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. And you know what, the thing that I realized that I'm in the Southwest for a good reason, and it's because I love Mexican food. Yes. I love everything about Mexican food. I have not had a very rarely have I had bad Mexican now that I've, you know, other than Taco Bell. We don't go to Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, that's not even like on the roster. So. <laughs> no, I was like, I thought Filiberto's was like the, I thought when I was a kid, that was, you know, we didn't have that. And it was just like, I don't know. We just went to like local places. Like Macayos. There was Macayos. There was. Uh, Garcia's. Garcia's. I know that there's also something Luna. Oh, yeah. Valley Luna. Yeah. yeah that's something Luna. like, um, yeah, that's like on Cave Creek, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm those pretty are pretty sure Carlos O'Brien's too. You know, I've had that. You know what I call that place? Do you mm -hmm. want some more cheese? <laughs> yeah. They There's put stuff is. Yeah. And you know where I, where we've gone to late lately is, um, well, actually since I've been married to my wife, La Canasta, it's like off of seventh Avenue and Buckeye. Oh, wow. It is downtown. Yeah. It's downtown Phoenix in kind of the hood area of Phoenix, but yeah. the food is amazing. I get there. Yeah, it's really, really super good. And then there's, um, we just found a place in Chandler that is, oh, it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's super good as well. I'll have to remember and tell you because we yeah. went down there for my wife's, so my wife is from uh, Arizona as well, and she's from Queen mm -hmm. Creek when it was, before it was what it is now in yeah. Exurb. She was there when her graduating class was like 40, right? So yeah. small, small community, farming community. And she, um, when we were down there, we had an opportunity to, to go to this one Mexican place in Chandler. And oh my mm -hmm. goodness. And it's like one of those, like if you go to Macayo's, there's Macayo's around the valley and then there's the original and nobody yeah. beats the original, right? Yeah. Yeah. We went to Rubio. 
Say that again? I got to try that place then. Yeah, I'll have to tell you more. I'll have to give you the, you know, it's like a, it's a chain that's here in town, but the original is in Chandler in like right off downtown Chandler, like just south of downtown Chandler and super, super good food. And I, I don't know if you ever had um, that taco shop right across the street from Chandler high school, mm -mm. Elmer's. Oh, that is some oh, good it's food. Really, really good. Super good. Okay. So, Get off the Mexican food. We're uh, we're all. I, I get. I love Mexican food. Hey, I'm already getting hungry. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so I was like, this is dinner time. Um, so I love Mexican food. The other thing that's um, cool is that, I mean, we have so much. Arizona is such a beautiful state. That's yes. that's another number one thing that you know. I've. It's funny because most people have never been to the Grand Canyon that have been here. I know people yeah. that have never been there, and I'm like wow, that's crazy. You've never been to the Grand Canyon, but that's okay. Whatever, right? <laughs> I guess it's because it's in your backyard. Yeah, well, I mean, I went for the first time um, on my honeymoon. Oh, my goodness. Really? Last wow. Yeah. When was your, now you've been married how long? For a year. A year. Nice. And then you have, <laughs> you did. Yay. And his name is <laughs> France. Did. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, every year is a year, right? Um, so you, and his name is Francis, which is yes. who you kind of make these products for, um, or yeah. you started at kind of making them for. He's your guinea pig, at least, that's for sure. Yeah, he's my definitely my guinea pig. That's actually what he was saying this morning. He was like, uh, so Rocio, I need more beard oil and I need more beard balm. I'm like, and I need a beard shampoo. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll get on that. Um, but yeah, he's definitely who I based uh, my beard products off of. Uh, I mainly had to revamp my labeling and basically make a mini beard company branching from my soap company just to make sure that men knew that I also made beard products and felt comfortable um, buying my products with different labeling if that makes sense wow that's awesome that's yeah. amazing i i can tell you that um the soaps are amazing um right off the bat the soaps were amazing <laughs> um we did get surprised with the soap the, the the soaps that and i was i was hesitating about what i should say about the soaps that i got as um samples because my yeah. wife goes my wife goes I think that those look like something else. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, I think that they look like not little fingers. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I go, I, you know what, what did it for me is I watched your live stream with, um, with, with Johnny. with Johnny. And I was like, well, honestly, that was the, one of the funniest scenes from it. But then I was like, maybe that's what they were. <laughs> and no, then, they were little cactus, I promise. Little cactus. That's what I told her. That's yep, exactly. I and promise. she goes, that's what I said. And then I saw that other, I said, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. I, But I loved, but they smell amazing. So the ones that I got was one that smelled like caramel, mm -hmm. kind of like a caramel cappuccino kind of smell. Yeah. And absolutely love that. And then you gave me that lathering bar, which is phenomenal. It has a double side on it mm -hmm. and I've shown pictures of it and it, I, I use it so much that now I don't <laughs> even want to show it because now it just looks like kind of like I need to order a new one because yeah, I do. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. But it has the, it has the little pieces on the one end that it actually is shaped like an egg, half an egg. So it's an yeah. oval. And then... On one part, it has that uh, where you get rid of the, you know, some dead skin. What are they? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, exfoliating. So it has an exfoliating yeah. side, and but it lathers so nice that you are yeah. like, yeah, it's amazing. I was like, she's on her stuff here because yeah. this is phenomenal bar, and I was very impressed. Thank you. I yeah. Well, yeah. You deserve. You know. I know you put some effort into it, and so. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, I did get your oils and I, I was going to show a little bit of this. This is, I don't care if they have cool labels or not. I know that you added some differently, but I know you made me kind of a special one. So this is what yeah. the oil looks like. 
Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I really, what I wanted to highlight here was how you are doing not just your soaps, but these oils and how they're made naturally mm -hmm. um, from the tinctures. So I was hoping that you could explain your tincture process. Yeah. Um, well, depending on what oils that you want, uh, since you got the creosote, right? I just sent you everything creosote. Right. Um, what I basically do is I gather the herbs. And I soak them inside of my base oils that I use for my products. And then from there, I let them soak uh, for a while. I would give it like a good month or two. Um, once you order something, it's already in the oil itself, my base oils. So if you ever order it again, for sure, it's already in my base oils. Um, depending on what someone orders, say for leather, or I've also had... Um, rosemary oh it was mike that got rosemary um scrub so what i'll do is i put my base oils in there along with the herbs or even the essential oil themselves and i basically pour and i strain it so it's pre i mix say for instance castor oil jojoba oil and almond oil i'll soak the creosote plant inside of there and then i'll strain it and pour it into your specific bottle which the creosote plant actually, whenever it rains or ex is exposed to moisture, excretes its natural oils. So, which is what gives it that smell, right? Exactly, exactly. Then that's what it gives it its smell. So, depending on the strength, if it's dried or if it's still fresh, then sometimes I'll steam it and apply it into the jar so it excretes the oil, it drips down, and then I strain it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And that takes knowledge. So yeah. just the fact, and that's the, that's the thing that I got out of that when we were discussing this was that yeah. you, that takes knowledge of the plant, yeah. which leads me to, know. right. Which leads me to where a lot of your original stuff comes from, which is lineage knowledge, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and we talked about the fact that you've lived in some places or at least have been to some places that I have been because my parents, uh, did about, they lived about four or five years up in, um, the North country in four corners area. They were teaching at just North of Chin Lee. Um, mm -hmm. and then they taught at many farms in Shiprock, which is, so you have, you said that you were, you had some Navajo side to you. Mm-hmm. And then you also had um, some Pueblo. Yeah. And I, I think you had a specific name for the Pueblo tribe that you came from. Uh, Laguna. Laguna, right. Mm -hmm. Which is, um, if anybody looks on the map, the Pueblos um, are next to the Navajo, right? Kind of like mm -hmm. um, in like just near, farm, just north, west or east of Farmington, right? Yeah, for the most part, honestly, I'd have to look on a map and just to double check. But I, that's why I always kind of grew up a little bit confused because I'd always have this long old list like, I'm Navajo, I'm Pueblo. And then, you know, we'd look at the map growing up and then my mom would show me like, you have to see there was always Navajos and Pueblos basically doing business with each other. And it's kind of crazy that we are separated by nations now. So there's not really, um, I know down to the detail that my great, great grandmother was taken from Navajo nation and re put into a Catholic, basically a Catholic environment, a Catholic home was forced to marry a Spanish man. And it kind of like, I know that type of detail and it's kind mm. of like it, it's sad and <laughs> some people are like right. oh my god that sounds really bad but it's true so that's why i don't know much of the navajo but i do know a little bit more about my pueblo side because of the fact that she was exposed um to pueblos and having my grandfather who was pueblo as well so they kind of got in the mix and they they didn't have enough um, lineage because they erased her Navajo label. Oh, right. If that makes sense. So, no, it does. It does. That makes total sense. Cause that's what, um, that's what we did. And so we have Tyson and Mr. Johnny grooms in. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> hey, you know, Johnny's good guy. 
you were on his you were on his live stream like a week ago, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. That's I had that was such a good live stream. I was so excited to see that. So, <laughs> um, so the other thing that's interesting is that so I was when I was getting my master's degree, um, I was getting taking some master's courses. And I wasn't quite sure. I thought I was going to go into education, to be honest with you. So I was up at NAU, Flagstaff. Yeah. And um, oh, God, it's beautiful there. Yeah, totally beautiful. I lived there. My first daughter was born up there. Oh. Um, so yeah, totally awesome place. Um, so I was up there and we I read a book that had something exactly the history behind it. And it was a fictional book, but it was one of those Hicks histor historical fictional books. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about how that had happened and how, you know, they still, there was the Four Peaks, which is considered their ancestors, um, which is the San Francisco Peaks and Flagstaff. And you could see that, you know, from miles away from the yeah. northern deserts. But it was really interesting to me because um, of the fact that I had no knowledge that a lot of that had occurred and that which had dove me into... Do I dove into a lot of that history at that point and realized how a lot of that stuff is erased from yeah. our <laughs> culture. Like bluntly erased. Right. And it's erased from our culture because of who wrote the books, you know, and that's what was interesting to me is that it was my first real understanding. I knew that there was slavery. I knew there was things that were atrocities in that time frame as well, but that we were doing it you know, or the Americans were doing it coming from Europe, were doing it to, you know, the Native Americans that were in this area. They were just trying to genderfy them. Yeah. And that was, and, we, and there's a couple things like that that always get me going, and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but <laughs> it, but it is one of those things where I'm just always blown away that it wasn't that long ago. It's within no, the it last... Wasn't. Right. It was within the last 200 years. Because I can tell you now that my, so one of my grandmother's birthday, she was born in 1875. Um, and then she died in 1975. My other grandma was born 1912 and died in maybe, I think, 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, so I heard these stories from like direct right. family members and my latest grandmother herself um, of growing up like that and having no say or, you know, the way she was treated for speaking her native tongue. And what's insane about it all is that um, at that time era as well, there was a lot of people also labeling natives as Mexicans. And then so you have this backlash of um, people being ashamed of their culture um, on one end, not being able to speak their native tongue, you know, being punished in that way and through the church for practicing their native practices and their language, and then being pushed to be labeled as Mexican because there is no other, like if you're not involved in the government or a tribe or a treaty, then you are not labeled native. And that's also scary because that brings up um, back then in the tribes, if you married someone who was European, then they relabeled you as Caucasian and you weren't allowed back in the tribe. So the fact that my grandmothers were taken from their tribal land and replaced in the Catholic and Christian home, forced to marry someone who was Caucasian or European, um, our lineage kind of like I'm barely finding out, you know, deeper into my roots than I ever have because I'm fighting for that opportunity to do so. Like we always knew as a family, we grew up knowing, but to have that opportunity to learn all of my history on my own and to teach my children is a little bit more harder than what it should be. So, right. because also our language, um, the basically the OGs don't want it written down on paper. It needs to be heard and taught, you know, like straight right. from the, straight from the person themselves. So it's really, it's, it's hard. It's a hard journey to, you know, to go through. 
It is. And that's, and the reason why I bring this up is because um, it's part of what you are as a company as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing that um, if you know, from these cultures that it is female dominated, not male dominated, Exactly. which is why in my opinion, you're a very strong representation of a very strong female in this culture, as well as in this bearded community. And I think that that um, is what is helping. Honestly, it helps you as a company owner because that, that is yeah. something that you, you have a strength, an inner strength that is helping drive you and your, yeah. you know, and I think that the cultural piece is part of you, just like um, for me, spirituality is. Um, mm -hmm. I think spirituality is deep and I think it's deep for you as well. And it comes from, a, from for you, I think it comes from a very, deep cultural understanding and background. And that's where the, the oils and the soap is coming in. It's, it's part of your, it's, it's not just, I always call it artistry, but this is yeah. deeper than that. This is, yeah, is being able to know the land and the plants that are in the desert and in certain areas to be able to make something out of them that is useful. And when I think about your soaps specifically, I think how moisturizing they are, but you are adding from, you know, recipes that you're, you've been passed on to you, mm -hmm. which is downright amazing to be <laughs> honest with you, which is what I really, really wanted to highlight because. Mind blown. Yeah, totally. It's, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great opportunity for people to connect yeah, with nice. real products. This is the real stuff, which is why Boston Mike, I think is getting, mm -hmm. saying what he is saying, which is I really, this is the real stuff. This is the real deal. These are real ingredients. The tinctures are coming from knowledge of the plant. Mm -hmm. And that plant knowledge is something that will help you because of the fact that different plants provide different, um, it's almost like an apothecary type of thing where it's helping yeah. you med med with medicine for your body, but it's helping you maintain health. And I love that about these. And that's kind of what I connected with is that when I started talking to you, I started, I always try to talk to a company and say, Hey, what is it they're offering? Yeah. And there's always something unique. And for me, for somebody, a from Arizona, I'm a native, I'm from Tucson. Um, and I was born down in Tucson. I was born at the same hospital that my mom was. Um, oh, wow. okay. Yeah, I was born at the same hospital. And then we came, we've been in the state way before it was a state. And we were, uh, my great, great granddad, or probably my great granddad was a actual home, um, cowboy, but he was a free ranger. So yeah. he was one of those folks that came in from the East and was free ranging cattle here. Yeah. So very interesting that we, I've been here forever and you know, I've, I was an air force brat. So yeah, and I was an air force brat and, but we, and we lived a lot of places, but now I've called Arizona my home since I was 18, since like, yeah. I was born here, lived here about four years, and we moved around a lot. But I always came back to Arizona as a base. And there, Arizona is just absolutely beautiful. And that's the one thing that I absolutely love about it. But there is so much, the desert has so much to offer yeah. in regards to plants and different things that are involved. in Because to be, live in such a harsh environment, there yeah. medicinally is amazing amounts. So, because if you think about it, there's the creosote, um, you have hoba, you have all the cactus varieties, which are helpful. Yeah. Um, and I know you know this for sure, because <laughs> we've talked about it. There's prickly pear. There's so many yeah. things that can be made out of the cactuses here. Yeah. That to live in this hostile environment, but these plants created defenses and oils and things to keep them alive, which in turn help yeah. us. Yeah. So I think that's what's amazing about these products and talking about them and it coming from a somebody who I know I can't make these. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling um, Jolly Old Fat Man that um, I have tried to play with essential oils and I get yeah. to like step one and two, which is eucalyptus and lavender. 
<laughs> and I mix everybody else except that when I try to add something else into that blend, it's a oh, no go. It's just like no. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I get the what is that smell? Get it out of here. But oh, you yeah. are that you have that. I mean, when I first got the creosote, now I had I my son, as you know, was begging. We love desert smells here. Yeah. So my son was on a live stream and he goes, I can't wait for dead. I said, we ordered one. You will not believe this. <laughs> and she's like just down the street from us. <laughs> and so that was really cool. And I was um, so glad to have, and I, what I'm surprised with, to be honest with you, is how many Arizona based companies there are. Um, oh. There's a ton. There's literally a ton. I was like, Husky Beard is out of here. Um, yeah, I've actually heard his his name a couple times, and I would love to get into touch with him. Yeah, he's an artist too. He's he makes uh, some really good product. I I have yet to try it. I just hear, mm -hmm. I, it, this is coming from conjecture, but I've heard tons of people telling me and raving about his butters and his oils. So I've talked to him a couple times. He actually comes, he's actually from my area, East Valley. Mm -hmm. And he actually went to a Mesa Unified School District High School um, and then Red Mountain High School. Yeah. And then we live right next to Mountain View, so. Oh, okay, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, we're off those, like we're right off the 202 and Val Vista, so kind of a newer yeah. community that just got built into the rich, like was was Orange Tree Groves, but now it's uh, yeah. houses. So we yeah, we've been really happy, um, and I love living in the valley. There's so much to do. There's absolutely so much to do, and like yeah. you said, I've been. Um, so I talked to I was talking to Liv Bearded, who's here in town as well. They're huge. I, I think I don't know if you know who they are, but. Uh -huh. They're a huge, they're a big company um, and they are out, based out of here as well, or they moved here. They were in Nevada for a little bit, but I met them in Scottsdale and they would love to do like a little beard to get together. And I know there's enough companies here that would be really, yeah. really fun to get together yeah, and do it. like a barbecue or something and get some yeah. beardos involved. There's a lot of beardo community members here and then there's a lot of good companies. Mm -hmm. So it'd be fun to try to, and I'm, I'm th I don't know how to get that to happen, but I know, I think it just, we'd be like just getting a park and renting it yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, we probably rent out a park and then yeah, and just kind of probably send out like an email or an event thing. And right. I'm sure we'd be able to plan it, just kind of get into touch with everyone and see what we can do. Yeah, that uh, would be so much fun, be, wouldn't yeah. it? That would be, be really, really cool. Yeah, it'd be like Farmer's Market Plus, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have you guys, now have you done any of the, I know we talked about doing, but you've gotten yourself into some really cool um, establishments here in the Valley. Um, mm -hmm. Can you name a couple, I, I don't know if, I don't know how many you have now. I know that you were downtown <laughs> for a while, but what yeah. companies are you in right now so that if people want to come pick up your product just from either, you can do it from the website and then you can also do it from these places. Yeah, so right now I'm at Gather. It's located on First Street in Washington, and that is um, inside of the Churchill. I don't know if you've personally ever been to the Churchill, but it's yeah. really cool. Oh, cool. I would strongly suggest going there. They have amazing products. Um, so right now you can find me at Gather and then at Coffee Zona, which is off of 7th Street in Washington, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Coffee Zona is probably now one of my favorite coffee places in town by far obviously i love dutch bros but if i'm gonna support a local company a small business i'd rather do that so yeah uh, i agree with you there i agree i didn't yeah. even know coffee zone existed that's cool yeah you should totally go there my beard products are actually there as well that's um, even better i have i used their coffee that they ground and all of that stuff um to make coffee based products so i use actual coffee oil and coffee beans inside of my products and there they have coffee blends so they have my lotion bars that are coffee they have my soap bars that are coffee they have my beard oils that are coffee based as well then That's awesome going, yeah i i was really really happy because i was able to check in and my stuff was doing really good there so i said why not since the holidays are going in you know me and the owner talked like That'd be a really cool idea to be able to have my holiday blends there. So that's what I decided to do. And I'm also going to be at Tangled Root Botanicals. 
Um, it got pushed back a little bit further than what I thought, but I'm pretty sure that we'd be making it happening within November. It's We've both been really, really busy and just... Yeah. We're both women that own our own companies and it's just like, we're nonstop and she's a mom and you know, I'm a mom. And it's like, if we don't literally catch each other in the middle of the road somewhere, we're <laughs> like, what? Oh yeah, I was supposed <laughs> to do that. You know? So yeah. Tangled Root Botanicals is also Ta- where's in that at? downtown on 59th Avenue in Glendale. So it's in downtown Glendale. Oh, I love that area. That is yeah. so, I just met somebody recently that had a wedding there and they absolutely loved it. So Tyson's <laughs> saying that he needs to get a, his hand on some of these soaps. <laughs> so, and we can, and he is out of South Dakota. So tell me oh, about, okay. what is your website address? My, web, my website address is morningmistsoapco.com. Uh, cool, so easy. Easy. Yeah. Yes. It's and it's also in, in your bio, bio, right? Yeah, it's in my bio. Uh, right now, I do have a beard bundle kit discount or sale going on. Uh, along with that sale, you automatically qualify for free shipping. Oh, so. that's cool. Get on this. Get on this, guys. Yes. So I am going to say that your bomb, which is this, um, mm-hmm. and I know that the flex of... Oh, you know, I love this. So I just love the, even the flex it. The smell is just absolutely amazing. But this is a very soft but hydrating balm. And it yeah. still does the purpose, has a little bit of hold. But if you are into hydration and getting that beard to feel soft and good, this is the product to buy. And she, yeah. and, and like, like she said, she makes them handmade. These are made for you specifically with whatever you know you were i think you have customs that you create i know this was kind of a custom that you held on to me for Mm -hmm. um i know you make one of my favorite drinks of all time and that's chai tea yes i am so into that that's and then we just heard some coffee drinks made from real coffee beans and oils um and so what else what what else go ahead so i also actually that you bringing up chai tea i also do matcha uh matcha soap and I, first of all, I love matcha. So I was like, I got to get on it. And plus, matcha <laughs> does really good things for your skin. It's an antioxidant. It helps with the caffeine, the green tea, with wrinkles, with, you know, just keeping your skin really refreshed. And when I first made the matcha soap, everyone was kind of like, oh, my God, like, can I actually use this? I'm like, yes, you can use it. I mean, if anything it might discolor slightly but it's still okay to use because it's in soap it's ground it's whipped up you know it's soponified you're good to go um with that being said a lot of people with my products um i actually had a customer ask me you know uh, about fragrance oils and how essential oils don't last that long and you know we just kind of got into this wormhole or this loophole of like all right. kinds of things to talk about um and i wanted to bring that up to you guys personally you know on this live right now mm-hmm. i'm not against i am kind of slightly against fragrance oils because there's not there's no uh regulations on them there's no uh, the fda the beauty cosmetic you know regulations there's really none for fragrance oils so a beard company can tell you these aren't bad but they're not good They don't even have to tell you that they put perfume or fragrance inside of your products. And that's really scary. It is. And that's what my, so my sister who is in Jamaica, Mon, um, who has a similar company and a similar ethic behind it. um, And she actually makes a creosote candle. So she, uh, yeah. So I am going to hook her up with your knowledge of creosote because she's been trying to make those long lasting. um, And I bet you have some techniques of steaming. Um, However, we talked about fragrance oils and she, she, when I first started getting involved with this, um, she said, I want to get involved, but only if we talk about the products and ingredients from a very health perspective point. Exactly. Now it's, there is a fine, there is even essential oils have low grade, and then high grade. The stuff that you're buying at a Walgreens or CVS is probably not even essential oils. It's probably some sort, it may be probably not a fragrance oil, 
but it may be like it's really diluted it's not like right it's not, not yeah. high quality exactly. and then you have companies like doTERRA and what is it something living um the other essential oil company that is the marketing tier um one they have high end they say they know from seed to oil what goes into it they own the farms so they are high quality and there's another gentleman here in town that uses only doTERRA essential oils oh really i go and through rose herb the rose, rose i know who you're talking about yes and they're they're good prices too and they're good yeah. and so their essential oils are and the thing about essential oils is they're coming from the oil of a plant. They're not synthetically made. Now, the thing about synthetically made is what you're saying is that you're not exactly sure what the end product is. Now, we're not saying that it's bad for you. We're just saying that there's not the regulation that other things have on them that could possibly be something that you may not want on your skin. Mm -mm. And just like what, and this is something that um, Boston Mike said in his la one of his um, last Instagrams, and this has kind of resonated with me, and that's why I, I said this is well said, that it's about what it does for you, which is why we buy yeah. it. The scents are a plus, but if yeah. it doesn't help you healthy health wise, do not purchase it because exactly. and. I I have total agreement with that. Just in, and, and I know that Dancy has and Dancy would say that fragrance oils there there really isn't anything specifically wrong with them, other than you don't know what they are. And there's a Netflix um, piece that talks Stink. about that, right? It's called Stink. Right. Sorry, I'm like super passionate about this, and it frustrates yes. me because. Um, there's enough studies to show that it has caused breast cancer. It has oh, caused goodness. reproductive health issues. It also um, brings down testosterone levels, which a lot of guys have trouble growing a beard. And you wonder why, because we're surrounded with things that affect our hormone levels. And my customer that brought up the topic of fragrance oils, like whether or not they're bad for you, I said, well, you need to take the base oils what you're using that is the main reason why you have your healthy full beard other than that the fragrance is literally doing nothing for you besides mm -hmm. causing these long-term issues that you're probably not gonna live to see <laughs> and that's and th really sad but it's true and that's in it. I, 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 I totally understand what you're saying. Um, and that's why my sister is part of my crew. <laughs> and that's exactly what her statement is, is that there is a lot of products that have hidden things in them that are not good for you. And we can all agree that things like sulfates, which have been proven that, that are basically in oven off or uh, easy, easy off oven cleaners, um, there's things like that that are actually in hair products now. Um, those are things that we know for certain. Those are studies have been done on them, a lot of them. And now they're coming out with the same studies on synthetically made products. Uh, and we don't, and the, the problem is, is you really don't know where they're coming from. And it's, and it is a touchy subject because a lot of our product owners are using fragrance oils because they want to keep this strength. But um, to your point, I think that you have a very valid point for sure, because there's yeah. been a lot of studies on it. And this is yeah. coming from this is coming from your knowledge as well as scientific knowledge mm -hmm. that using good ingredients, natural ingredients is probably the best way to go all the way around. And yeah, you're not probably you may not have in, 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 like what you're saying, you may not have strength. It may not last eight hours but you're not going to have something that's carcinogenic that is in yeah. your product. Yeah. And that's, um, that's something that I have learned different carrier oils hold different essential oils differently. Um, the percentages of how much essential oils you put in versus, you know, regular oils that you use. And I made a bomb called Ramona's remedy. 
and that's named after my grandmother. Uh, I was talking about it in Johnny's uh, video, but my grandmother, she burnt her eyebrows off and she put this aloe vera and like peppermint and this like weird concoction of everything inside of this little balm, rubbed it, you know, rubbed wherever she would got, you know, she didn't have any hair and she grew hair back wherever she, <laughs> and so that's kind of where like it, that at one point may have been an experiment, but we've used aloe vera for years and years since the plant has been exposed to humans. Right. So in my opinion, I think that's another reason why I'm just like a little firecracker whenever someone starts talking about it is because mm -hmm. my products have health benefits behind it. They have like rosemary and thyme and stuff like that. And even eucalyptus and lavender. And of course, something too much of something can harm. But when you're using it in doses and doing it correctly, there's always those benefits to me that I've learned. I'm not saying I can cure you, of course, you know, right, but right. it's going to help at one point. And I'm proud to say that I don't have um, fragrance oils in my stuff. I really am. And that's something that I'm going to shout to the rooftops, if, you know, that like to me, I'd rather help you grow your beard and keep it healthy a natural way than you putting something in your beard that might make it brittle or, you know, might give you issues or irritation or acne and all of that stuff. Right. And then this is the one thing that was a takeaway for me is that you're the person that you love the most is your guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you made, started and making kids. and your kids. Right. And so these are people that you love and you really want to have be healthy. And, you know, as if anybody out there who has parent is a parent understands that level quite well. Um, and that's a huge factor is that you want your family to be around. And so you're going to be putting, giving them the best things possible. And you have that knowledge of what that is. Now, aloe vera, I, that is one of the plants that I think in, I think that from the Arizona desert plants, that is one of the most uh, coveted for medicinal reasons um, yeah. because it has so many uses. It has, I mean, I, I, there's aloe vera. I know people that drink now it's turned into a drink that you can drink yeah. that helps you with that. You can drink it. Um, and you don't just drink the plant. There's, they, they definitely did some stuff because you can't yeah. get yourself sick, but I, we use it for sunburns here. Um, we have aloe vera in my backyard. I just snip off some aloe vera and I'm putting it on sunburns raw, you know, yeah. and just taking out and just getting that gel into the skin. Um, there's a couple companies that have that is one of their number one oils. Um, and I am a full, full on believer that aloe vera is like just an amazing plant and um, always happy to have that in my garden. And it always makes me think of, you know, my grandparents too, but, um, yeah. it's, but it's a really good plant. And there's a reason why it has so many, why you put it on burns because it helps your skin. It's very yeah. good for the skin. It's moisturizing. What's, right. And what's, what's something else that you would say? So we're talking about um, taking oils, making tinctures. What's something else unique that is, that you're making? I know your soap base um, has some amazing stuff in it as well. And I wanted to talk about how moisturizing it is and what is it that does that for this product? So in my soaps, I use a varied amount of oils mainly my my main uh butter that i use is shea butter but it's raw unrefined african shea butter i mean i can if i can have that plant in my backyard i probably would need it i know that whenever right. i go down and i order it from the african market they're like oh god like how is she not <laughs> she's probably gonna <laughs> take our entire plant um and all of my products mainly have the same ingredients, like the base oils. So you have sweet almond, you have jojoba, you have castor oil. Castor oil is so amazing for your hair, for uh, repair, for damaged hair, um, for your follicles. It's 
breathable, it's thick, it actually helps create lather. And I think one thing as a, a soap making person would know is that castor oil does the trick. Um, and whether it's sweet almond oil or, you know, mango butter, I've always just relied on castor oil. <laughs> like castor oil is my go-to. Um, yeah, yeah. And one of my friends, um, he is, he just puts castor oil right on his beard. That's, yep. he says that'll help me grow. I just leave it at that. Yeah. And that's, what's so crazy is that, um, a lot of people think that you need this crazy amount of smells or, or oil concoctions and you really don't, you really don't. A lot of people are surprised to know that my main oils, my base oils and butters are all the same. I oh, literally wow. add different essential oils depending on what you want or need. Um, I actually had a customer mention that I um, make or that I don't make um, masculine smells. And I wanted to, I made sure that I, I gave that person, you know, the masculine smells that I make. But a lot of them, I don't wanna put any labels on any of my scents because scents should not have a gender to it. Um, my colognes that I make as well, along with my soaps and my, my bombs, my butters, my lotion bars, they all have the same base oils, right? Mm -hmm. But with my colognes, they have higher concentrations of essential oils. Um, and it's mainly, and I, and I don't really like to use, uh, it's candelilla wax, but I don't really like to use it often. So I would actually consider my balm kind of like this hybrid, especially in your situation. Since I used such concentrated oil from the uh, creosote plant, that's what gives it kind of that texture that you're describing oh yeah because i love it I, yeah it's literally just straight up the oils and the butters from the creosote itself um and you know my masculine sense or whatever you want to call them <laughs> you know my masculine my florals you can always you know the aroma uh choices on there you can always mix it up you can add you can take you know and that's one thing that i'm super picky about is giving that that option to people I wanted to make it as simple as possible I mean you can literally I'm, I'm not saying I can make you smell like a snickerdoodle <laughs> or like you know but you have to be realistic <laughs> a lot of people right. I mean a lot of people are like well what are my options I don't know what my options are I'm kind of lost and it's like well you know the the options that I give you are floral citrus linen linen is just straight up like cotton like you will smell like a cotton field oh i love that like fresh laundry yeah um and that's really it's actually pretty funny when i make sense like that because i i don't like that smell <laughs> and i'm kind of like biased on it i'm like biased towards lavender too there's just certain i love like lavender <laughs> yeah I, i'm like <laughs> maybe because it's it's made so often you know Yes. Like I, I've made a I've made a cologne or a cologne slash perfume with cedar wood, uh, frankincense, lavender, and warm vanilla. Oh, nice! But I took the the lavender out for me, and I'm like, okay, I'll take the cedar wood. You know, I'll take I'll take. Because lavender's rest. been overdone, right? For you, you're like yeah. hey, everybody does lavender. I want to put something <laughs> different that smells unique and has my own my own exactly. thing in it. Yeah, I'm I hear you. They're all neroli right now. Neroli oh. Or Oh my God, so good! I know what you're talking about. So yeah, I I, I go down to Sprouts quite a bit, and those yeah. are you know I I just love going down there because that was my first entry level into essential oils. Yeah, buying those little square bottles that they have there, and <laughs> so I absolutely love going down there and trying to do. I I, I try to be I I'm like a I feel like a wizard. You know, um, we have the Fable Wizard, and he is uh, a definitely a master of these scents. But I go down there, and I'm you know, like, oh, this is some sort of brew that I make. Now, most of the time, like yeah. I said, my wife is, like, totally not into it. <laughs> yeah. I was into a huge lemongrass kick, and oh, so I, I went. And, that anymore. I know. It's so, it's like, now it's overdone, right? So, yeah. and I realized that, yeah, now I smell, it smells like bug 
stuff now. Like it's like, hey, this yeah. is anti DEET stuff. But um, and then I thought, well, I'll just buy, buy the Centronella, which is like a lower version of the lemongrass. Yeah. Uh, my wife wasn't buying it. Um, she's like, take that out of the diffuser. No you such luck. <laughs> yeah. I've been I playing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what she says. Yeah, that's exactly how she feels. Um, she said, I, I don't feel good because of it. So we stick with eucalyptus. She's not a huge lavender fan either. So she likes, I'll put it in there because I sleep better with it. But yeah. um, I try really hard to do like calming, like frankincense, um, sandalwood. But frankincense and sandalwood are so expensive as essential oils. Yeah. It is. And it's, it's probably the most expensive one, actually. Besides yeah. Those. Yeah. And so I was, it was like a hundred bucks, right? For or $78 for just even the ones that you buy at Sprouts. I don't know. Rose, that, um, the one where you buy yours from, um, Rose whatever, Mountain Herbs. Rose Mountain Herbs. They have decent prices. So if anybody yeah. out there is looking for, decent prices on things like that, that is definitely the place to go website wise. Um, and it's, you'll get premium products. You really do. And I think that you can attest that those are fairly good essential oils. The other one that I really have been playing with is I really like the cedar wood. And then I've been putting pine cedar wood and then eucalyptus together. Yes. Oh, that woodsy smell just and now my son doesn't like it, but that's, I love that smell because I, I love the woodsy. I was stuck on it. I made Kyle a blend exactly like that. Um, and what's really funny is that a lot of people don't really know that when you mix pine and like those, it is pretty woodsy, but citrus goes a long way with it and it can actually help with oh. headaches and like feeling nauseous and stuff like that. Um, what kind of so, citrus would you do like orange or lemon or? So what I do is I do a blend of grapefruit, lemon, lime, and orange. Oh, nice. Like so, a drop or two of each. In your, in your diffuser? Yeah. Nice. Um, I, I was reading through the chat right now and it just said if I ever got compared to Dr. Squatch. <laughs> so Tyson, yes. What it is and now Tyson stuck I think that what he's references is the soap because it's all natural. Yeah, well I think that's his really reference. Funny. What's funny is that I just put up on my stories like basically talking smack a little bit because I saw an ad pop up for Dr. Squatch and it was of a blonde girl without a t-shirt on, no bra, no nothing, just holding up soaps up to her boobs oh, um, that literally has nothing to do with soap like at all but it made you look at the soap because you'd be looking at her tits right right um and it's like really are you serious like did you have to go down that level like to <sighs> sexualize someone over so from now on i would like to say no i've never been compared to dr squatch right that's what it is yeah Okay, um, but I've been compared to other major beard companies. Um, was beard, it like beard brand or no? It, um, oh my god, they make the like the grandpa's. Oh, grandpa's t pine tar. Right, right, right. Yeah, I know who you're talking I, about. I make pine tar. I make pine tar soap. Oh, do you? Oh. That's like yes, a I totally. Do. That's a good soap, and there's a couple in our there's a there's a couple in our community that do really good pine tar as well. But I would love to try your pine tar because that yeah. I will tell you is the best product to get your beard just completely at square one. It yeah takes you there, it, and that's why I started buying Grandpa's because that's the only one I knew. Yeah, but that's yeah. awesome. What what goes into yours? Right now, it's basically my shea butter bar with pine tar. Like, I just straight up add pine tar to my my lather bar. So there's shea butter, there's castor oil, there's jojoba oil, there's sweet almond oil. Um, specifically to the pine tar, sometimes I'll add coconut oil because it's more of a... To me, I don't like using coconut oil that often in my products because it's very just the texture of it can, and it's not as absorbing as many people think. So it can actually cause acne 
But when you use uh, very stripping, so like really um, cleansing, I, I don't want to say that it strips, but it definitely it's it's a higher soap content. It's a higher percentage of like the soaponification that happens. Right. Um, that you are taking alt oils out. So to add the more um, thicker oils, the, the ones that last a little bit longer, you know, just kind of get it not like super greasy. It's so weird because I have to explain it to someone that doesn't make soap. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And I yeah. actually wanted to, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm not, but I would like to address to people that there's different types of soap out there and you need to always make sure that when you're buying bar soap that you know what type of bar soap it is you have hot processed you have cold processed and you have melt and pour or glycerin soap mm -hmm. so when someone says you know i hand make soap are they buying the packaged soaps from the store that they just cut up and melt and add stuff to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or are they like making it from scratch, soap, hand, poured, you know, gotcha. these oils mixed together because it has different effects on the skin. That's good to know. So, and what yeah. I would assume the second would be the preference because it's um, coming from knowledge and yeah. your own ingredients. And it, well, it also depends on the person too, right? So if they're doing number two, they have to have your kind of experience. You can't just pick up, you know, the DIY, you know, Pinterest. That's where I started trying to make my own beard oils just by the way. And uh, I failed miserably, but, um, but, but having that knowledge of what you're putting into it and how it goes together yeah. is a, is artistry as well, but it also yeah. is what really makes the piece go to, is what makes it the best soap out there. Right. Yeah. And it, what's crazy is someone asked me, you know, when did I learn how to make soap? And I've been on and off making soap for maybe about two or three years, maybe my other like herbalism and stuff like that came down from family. And like, I've always just done that. We've always, been um herbalist and and the the spiritual and physical healers of the community and you know my grandmother actually I remember growing up she had tinctures all along her wall and plants and she would you know do all kinds of different concoctions of herbs and people would come from out of town into her village and just for her I love that so when I started making soap, I learned from an amazing woman who was making soap for 20 plus years, all from me picking up a self-sufficiency book um, for luxurious soap recipes, right? But this is like from the 60s or the 70s. So I had really old fashioned, high quality soap. Like these soaps are the, t the top of the line. And I showed her this book and I go, teach me how to do this with your guidance, like show me how to handle this properly. And so we basically had a day where we threw on gloves, we threw on goggles and she taught me how to do everything from scratch. And I've learned on my own from that basic recipe with soap. And I just took it to the next level and I've tested myself and like really pushed my limits as to what I can do. And I've learned that you can add so many things me, I'm not really the person to design my soaps. I know a lot of people take the time to really like hand paint and hand carve soap, but mm -hmm. I don't have the time for that. So <laughs> well, you're a parent, right? Right. Yeah, I'm a parent. So I like to use molds. I prefer using molds. Um, loaf cuts. I like the shape that I gave you. Mm -hmm. Make it easier. I have new molds coming out that are actually the massage bars style. So I'll make my lotion bars and my beard balms or whatever and my soaps inside of that massage mm -hmm. mold. Um, I also have another sunflower mold coming out. I also, you know, a lot of guys prefer just like the egg shape. So it's easier to hold, easier yep. to maintain. Um, I love to stick to those because I know for a fact I hate washing my body with square soap. I hate it with yeah. passion. 
I, I think that you dig into your skin when you're doing that. So yeah. Tyson's asked, he's like, you make Pine Star. He's ready to add to his order already. Oh, yeah. Um, so you literally just type in earthy or you'll see like your selected aroma that you prefer go ahead and do earthy because pine is an earth aroma um and then in your description it'll ask you like if there's any something you know anything specific that you need just type in pine tar and that's all you need to do yeah you can and literally just do that um i actually have an example as to how to order a lot of people ask me, well, what are, you know, what I can do? You have to look into the categories of what essential oils are into what or what smells are into what. So if something is earthy, I think pine, I think frankincense, I think eucalyptus, like, you know, like floral is rose and, you know, geranium and um, peony and, you know, I can't on the top of my head think of any floral things right now or citrus is grapefruit lime you know stuff like that lemon so i try and make it as easy as possible cool so i don't know i think to a point i made it a little bit too easy because people have access to whatever they want so sometimes i get some really weird requests but oh, that's awesome that's really awesome so he's Mr. Tyson is sounds like he's going to be adding to your order. Um, and so the one main thing that I gain out of this knowledge from you in this wonderful discussion is that you are extremely passionate about yes. your company. Um, I think that a strong female in this community is definitely a very big positive. There's a few of you around, not a ton. I would love to see more. Um, I, I hope you we would be able to do like a little get together with the women, at least like on a stream, you know, I, I'm thinking about that. Cause there's another company that I've been talking to, um, that has a female owner. I, I think that empowering, and this is my sister coming out of me too, um, as well. She'd be saying the same thing that empowering mm -hmm. women to be part of, communities that were historically male dominated, I have noticed that women thrive there and not based off of, because they have a talent that I think that they just are talented and, and empowering them to get into it, to be inspired. I think that you're somebody who can inspire other women who are on the edge of making, because they, a lot of women have these recipes that have been carried down from generations to generations like yourself and being able to inspire women to do something you have what four you have three or four kids right i have three three and yeah, no, um i'm putting the fourth one in there because i we were yeah. talking about that so i was like you know if we start talking about the fourth the fourth is going to happen yeah. but <laughs> but you have three kids um you have and they're fairly young and you yeah. are um a mom a wife you're also a very strong woman in this community and you also own an amazing company um what kind of inspirational message would you leave to women that were in the that were thinking about getting into this community um that were into getting into the soap or the beard community whatever it is what kind of inspirational thing would you like to say to those type of people i would like to say to never underestimate your products don't ever underestimate your worth in your products just as much as you wouldn't underestimate yourself um, never accommodate to someone because they're not willing to pay for your stuff. You work hard and you deserve every penny that goes into that order. I've had a lot of experience experiences with people where me even doubting myself to begin with. And it's, it's tough. But I've had to raise my prices because I put in hours and hours waking up, staying up late, you know, waking up early. And that's on top of juggling my kids, my husband, what my kids need, what I need. And just as much as someone would want to get paid $15, $20 an hour for manual labor, you need to do that for yourself as well. And you need to also, another thing too, and I would, I would definitely say it because I've also said this to my daughter, 
you should never take no as is your way to like as a a halt don't ever stop when someone tells you no because i've had different opportunities that i wanted to do and i was just not ready for them but i came back six months later and here i am in a, in a major store in downtown phoenix and i took the time to reevaluate myself as a company and my own person and you know and that's something that i i had to do and i didn't take no as an answer i went back and i pushed harder and another thing that i would like to add to leaving them with a message is you need to also give yourself the time and respect for yourself. You need to definitely learn how to turn off your phone. I'm still practicing that. You need you need to just give yourself time. You need, you know, to focus on yourself, you know, self import, you know, just that love and care, you know, self-care, self-nurturing is extremely important because I find myself becoming irritated and no longer passionate in times when my family needs me or I'm just like overwhelmed with everything and, and I don't want that to ever affect myself or, my, you know, my health or my family's health. Because when you go to work, you're able to go to work and clock out and just come home. But when you're working from home and, you know, you own your own business, you're, you're carrying that everywhere you go. So that's definitely something that I would love for other women to learn is that you can be the most successful CEO of your own business and, you know, thrive, but you'll never be able to be happy unless you have self care. Cause you can juggle everything on your plate, but as long as you have that hour or two to yourself, like that's what you need. And I'm like, as I'm saying this, I'm like, I got to start practicing more what I preach, but that's definitely something, um, you know, that I needed to add to that along with don't take any bullshit from any man. No sexualization, no disrespectful speaking. Like, I've been spoken to in the most ridiculous ways, and I will not take that from anybody, ever. And that's and that's good. That's self-worth. And I think that that's one thing that I, that I uh, promote. I have daughters myself, and um, I want my daughters to have role models that are strong like yourself because that is something that helps uh, create a stronger community and I, I think that there is extreme value in empowering women to yeah. do what you're doing. Absolutely. And I think, so, and you know me, I am a meditation teacher. And I, so I am, you're preaching to the choir on self-care. Yeah. Uh, self-care is everything. Um, if you are, the source of happiness is you and in your mind. And if you are not doing that for yourself, then you are not going to find happiness in whatever you're doing, whatever yeah. venture. Um, but uh, I digress and I appreciate your time. It's been Thank about you. an hour. I want to be mindful of your time as a mom, but <laughs> as a mom and I'm, and I want to promote the fact that if you are in the Phoenix area, there is something big happening with one of your daughters, right? Can people go to this event? And yes. so yeah, tell me I, about, I, tell me just a second about that. I want to promote that really quick. Cause I, I just no, thought that was amazing. Good. No, you're good. I um, I actually want to add as well um, for any of anyone that's on here listening. So my my daughter, she got casted for all four nights uh, at the Symphony Hall for Napoli. She is one of, you know, the, the not like a main, you know, main dancer, but she's in there. She's in the front. She's doing her thing. And um, that's at balletarizona.org. It's one of the biggest um, ballet companies here in Arizona. She got casted. She's going to be in all four nights. She's very, very happy to be in Napoli. She also got casted um, in Cinderella as well as um, pretty sure that she got casted for um, the Nutcracker. She has to fit a height requirement. So I'm like, you better grow. <laughs> You're <gonna> grow. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you go to balletarizona.org, you can find the tickets for Symphony Hall for Napoli. Uh, she's going to be there. The tickets are for sale. She's just an amazing ballerina. She's got her heart and her soul into it. Um, she is one of the best dancers that I've ever seen. And she 
wants to be one of the first women of color, indigenous women to own their own dance company um, and their own studio. And like, she wants to focus on that. So that's something that she took from me being, you know, a woman of color and an indigenous woman, woman owning her own company. So for her to take that and see the importance of that and that empowerment, I'm very, very proud of her. Um, that being said, I have an event coming up as well in oh, Arizona. Cool. Oh, did someone comment on the? No, you just said hello. Oh. Yep, no worries. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have an event coming up. And actually, if you would like to go, uh, it's on November 7th at the Press Room in downtown Phoenix. I have my link, actually, and my website at morningmistsoapco.com to buy tickets for for to see me. Basically, you'll see me. You'll get access to watch music. There's other artists. There's other, um, there's a fashion show. You know, there's all kinds of different art and crafts and all of that stuff. I got picked, which was really, really cool. They emailed me. They're like, hey, we really love your stuff. We love the journey that you're on. We want you to be a part of this. Um, raw Artists is the Raw Artist Showcase is actually what it's called. Um, it's on November 7th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. on a Thursday. It's super late. But if you can't make it or if you're out of state, you can still go to that link and buy tickets in my name. And that profit will go towards my booth. And that gives the basically the promoters... Like, oh, you know, that's a heads up. People actually want to go see this person and they'll keep me in their shows and give me other opportunities to be a part of that community. So Good. that's something super important. Um, like I said, it's all on my website. Check it out. I would really appreciate any type of donation or anything like that to go towards my booth. That means the world to me. If you do buy some, if say you do buy a ticket or you do donate, then you get a free product from my website. So that's awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. And how many cents of soap have you made so far is what somebody was asking. Um, I would say over 100. Over 100. That's amazing. Yep. Over 100 different concoctions. And um, this, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. 100. <laughs> but yeah. and this is this goes along with your idea that it has to be over 100 because everybody gets a personalized yeah. product. So... Yeah. And uh, we now, you know what? As soon as we walk out, or we're about That's ready so to leave. Funny. All these people Bam. are coming in. Hey so, guys. Bam is in. Bam is in. Um, you know, I'd like to add to that. Um, all of these, like I said, are personally made, so they're different concoctions. Um, and if you guys ever need help picking out something like a cologne or you know a beard scent, I can do it. I can. You literally. I've been left with the fate of <laughs> however someone <laughs> smells and I can guarantee you're going to be smelling good. So that's good. And then I think Mr. Jolly old fat man is saying, I need a white unscented soap. Oh, interesting. Oh, that, that strips the wax good. off my beard. Ooh, that's, that's um, a good. Well, if you wanted like all of the wax, like, is it like straight up wax or is it like a bomb? Because that does make a difference. Um, I would honestly use, I'd have to say like rosemary and eucalyptus, like just straight rosemary and eucalyptus and, and a shea butter soap, like in the most simple, simple soap. Yeah. So he's saying bombs. So it's a bomb. Oh yeah. Well, honestly, if that's the case, if, if you're just washing off bombs, then I would just any of my bar soaps, then you can use any of my bar soaps. For the most part, tea tree oil does a pretty good job at um, taking that off. But I would just strongly suggest, oh, but it has to be white. Yeah, because um, he's a Santa Claus. So he plays a Santa Claus and he has to have any, oh, he dyes yeah. his beard white. So it has to be something okay. that's not going to take on any color. Okay. Um. Well, the only thing that my soaps have, like for the exfoliation, would be still cut oats, like ground still cut oats. But you saw the color of my bar soap and mm -hmm. I don't add... The only time I ever add any colorants to it is just purely out of effect. But unless you request that, then I don't do that. Like, it's no other color. And the shea butter after soaponification actually doesn't have any of that yellow pigmentation to it. So you're fine. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't affect the... 
And I can yeah. vouch that I have not seen any product come. I haven't seen no. any discoloration in anything. Yeah. And a really cool thing too, is that when you know, when you're getting something and there's a bunch of residue in your beard, uh, I like, I would say whenever you, with a soap, at least like, I hate using like shampoo bars and stuff like that, mm. that have residue. That's not good. Like you just, it you depends can... on your water too. Right. But, and we have hard water here. So yeah. it's like the toughest on your soaps, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Pine tar. Yeah. That's wow. what he's, yeah, that's what he's saying. So I'm wondering if what you were describing earlier with your pine tar might, cause you have a little bit of coconut oil, which is white in color, right. Or clear. Yeah. So you might get away with uh, having a good stripping, but also using and also moisturizes, right? Yeah. Well, in all honesty, I it would I would just have to do the pine tar in a different percentage because a lot of people just straight up use over seventy five percent of pine tar inside of their soaps, um, and the rest are oils or butters. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. I would just use more butters and less pine tar for that individual bar, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it does. And so I, so jolly old fat man, I'm saying, um, I think you need to talk to this lady. She knows her stuff, yeah. um, by far knows it. And she is at morning mist soap co as her handle mm -hmm. on Instagram. And she is also at morning soap is it company or I can't, it's soap co. Oh yeah. Morning Mo soap co.com. Morning mist. So it's about the same. Um, let's see. Here's one more thing. Hey, send me your link so we can chat. Yeah, I will. <laughs> so J O F M. If you just type in J O F M beard co. Yeah. Um, he is an amazing owner as well. I had him on last week. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's an amazing person. So, and I would love to see what you could help this gentleman out with because he is one of my fair, favorite guys here. Um, and it would be really cool to see what you guys could come up together to help him out yeah. with some good soaps. Yeah, because I'm sure, because that was one of the big things that he was saying is this, that he could not use anything that's going to discolor it because he doesn't have a white beard. He has a beard that he has to dye white. And then because the dye, it just, it keeps taking on color of any type yeah. because he's dyeing it versus it just being that natural white. So, that's kind of, well, I mean, that's just like when anyone colors or dyes their hair, I've never personally dyed my hair like to that extent, like a blonde where, you know, like a lighter shade, you know, where it would take on color, but I can, does he ever use purple soap? I don't know. Let's I see. If he ever uses purple soap. Yeah. Is that? Is there something? What is purple soap? So the, there's a purple soap meant for like blonde dyed hair or white dyed hair, like just specifically for that. I'm pretty sure that multiple salons have it. Like it's only something in the salons because it's like a, not that it's super chemically, but it's to protect dyed hair. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. So he said yeah, yes. I wonder if that, mm, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, he's saying skimmering light. Yeah. I wonder if, well, I know that Lush makes, I don't really go to Lush often because, well, I mean, obviously, like, they're considered my competition, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see. So I would suggest you guys keep in contact. Um, and yeah, yeah. JOFM, I am Mr. Jolly Old Bam. Um, we are, yeah, definitely keep this conversation going. Um, I would love to hear the results and maybe I know that I owe JOFM a live stream showing off his new beard look as well. Cause, um, he is, he is Santa Claus in his area. Yeah. So, and that's what I absolutely love. So last week we saw him without the whole dye. And today he just revealed his new die and then we'll have to have him on. Yeah. So maybe you guys can talk in the meantime and then we can discuss yeah. how your soap is going and maybe we can just get you guys all on and we can have a little discussion about that would be actually pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. And I think that's what uh, Johnny and Joe were also going for is how do can we get this community together and really start working together 
and being able to do things like this where a company is talking to even another company about how to help themselves, you know, yeah, and, and I know that um, Crusher and Boston Mike have helped me from the very beginning. Actually. Oh, awesome. awesome. So that has given me so many opportunities and I have to pay homage to him and I absolutely adore him and his wife and Mike and his girlfriend. They're amazing people. Um, and I'd like to throw in, you are not only supporting a, a beard company, you are supporting a woman owned company on top of a woman of color who is indigenous and i mean we get like 75 cents to the dollar to the dollar if that like you know so right. like in corporate america here mm -hmm. you know and it's it's really rare to see indigenous women or even like you know women of color in general owning their own business in a male dominated industry Field. that's like a whole other that's, you know. But that goes to show your personality and your passion. Um, yeah. I think that that's something that is, that's the reason why I wanted you on. I think an empowering person, somebody who can inspire others to take, you know, your take the lead, take the lead here. Cause this yeah, is somebody you. that can definitely do that. And in, I think inspirational for people to see that kind of, especially for women, you know, that are yeah. kind of like on the fence about whether they should take some of this to market um it yeah. look what happens you know you you're making you're doing successful work you have people that desire your stuff and i think that you're coming from a place of helping mm -hmm. which is where i think that that's my biggest key in life for myself and why i do these live streams and mm -hmm. is because i want to help thank other you. people right thank you okay so we will talk I, he's getting off. He's probably going to go. I think it's time for us to go. Yeah, um, I got I to get dolled up for a date. Yay. Go out with the go out with Mr. Francis and enjoy yeah. your night. Where are you guys off to tonight? We probably are going to Pizzeria Bianco. Oh, cool. I don't know if you've ever been there. I have not. It's on the west side, I take it. There. You should take your wife there. Uh, it's yeah. really affordable and it's super romantic like it's old style like italian um the oven the, the fire oven um pizza oh my god it's so delicious and it's really really romantic so oh i love that yep i'm gonna definitely have to go look that up thank you so much for being on here and taking your time away from your kiddos and husband <laughs> and your business but I really appreciate your time and you. take care. Okay. You too. And thank everybody else who's going to be watching this and have, <laughs> has watched this. <laughs> we'll talk to you All soon. Right, bye guys. Bye. bye.